Hello and a very warm welcome and in today's video we're going to talk Kevin Magnussen, the big Danish testicle man. Wow, what a return he's had. Literally didn't even think he'd be racing in Formula 1. He got a lifetime opportunity with Mazepin with what happened and a late call up and Kevin Magnussen's performance, wow. I mean, on short notice, twice in the points out of three rounds, very good. I mean, yeah, Haas was very stale with Grosjean and Magnussen. They needed a change. They went down the money route of Mazepin and Schumacher. And then, yeah, very bad. Haas were the last team. They were not very good. They sacrificed 21 for performance in 22. And then what happened in Russia happened. Mazepin lost his drive. They needed a driver. They went for experience in Magnussen. Literally, he gets called up, hardly gets any testing. He goes to Bahrain and he finishes fifth. So he's had a year out of the sport and comes back and finishes fifth straight away. Then he goes to a new track in Saudi Arabia. Finishes ninth, uh, with which a track he's never driven around, and then Australia was bad. Team performance was poor, and if you're gonna pick a track where Haas are gonna be good, it's gonna be Austria or Australia, and they were really poor at a track you would expect them to be good around. It's been a sensational return by the Dane, two points finishes, Aula free. Sensational return. One year out and then he comes back and gets a fifth in his first race. It's like, kind of, that's like a win for Haas. Uh, adapted quickly, on short notice. Yeah, showing, now we're going to find out whether Mick Schumacher's overhyped. Because he had no competition really with Mazepin. Kevin Magnussen's beat Mick twice. So yeah, we're going to see if Mick is the next deal, or whether he's just overhyped because of his surname. Um, yeah, he probably thought his F1 career was done and he's been given a lifeline as Kevin Magnussen. Everyone will talk about Charles Leclerc, George Russell. They like to talk about the guys at the front. Let's have a word for Alex Albon and Kevin Magnussen, who are doing a great job in their teams. But it won't get mentioned because... It's not going to get clicks, is it, Kevin Magnussen? But yeah, he probably thought his career was over, and yet he's got another chance. And if he goes and beats the next up-and-coming prodigy in Mick Schumacher, it puts Magnussen out there. And I have a question for the people. Is Kevin Magnussen underrated? That is the question I'm asking you and the people in the comments. Is Kevin Magnussen underrated? It is sensational when you think about it. He's probably just laid on the sofa. Gunter calls up. Fuck, smash my door, Kevin. We need a driver. Can you come and drive? And Kevin's like, yeah, go on then. Okay, Kevin, just come. <laughs> Fuck, smash my door. Uh, it's kind of ironic when Magnussen smashed the door. Gunter's like, we've got two fucking idiots driving for us. And then Gunter's, like, called him back up. Yeah, it's sensational by Magnussen. A fifth, a ninth, and a fourteenth. Very impressive by the Dane. Um, yeah. And I'm excited to see who's going to come out in this battle. Schumacher or Magnussen. I mean, think about it. Magnussen's twice in the points. Schumacher going to get it up here. Schumacher's yet to score, isn't he? Let me get up the standings quickly on the F1 app. Magnussen, where are we? Kevy. So he's lying ninth with 12 points. Sensational by Magnussen. Yeah, Haas have only got 12 points, so yeah. Kevin Magnussen, 12 points. Uh, it's a great, it really is. It is great. To have a year out of the sport is a bit like Albon. Year out of the sport, Albon comes back firing. Magnussen comes back firing. I mean, that fifth place. 
on his first race back is it's incredible. And that is like a win for Haas. Haas are never going to get a podium. They're never going to challenge for a race win. So finishing fifth is basically a win. Yeah, I think Magnussen's been outstanding. Comment down below. And is he underrated? Adios.